Welcome back to Long Way Home everyone, hope you're enjoying your lovely Saturday. If you're watching this on a Saturday, what great constructive conversation our last video on Yamaha's Tenere 700 has generated. Some of you really went all out writing long informative comments on the subject and actually giving great advice. So thank you for creating our own little corner of motorcycle riders from around the world here on YouTube. Except for the Australians. With such classic pearls as this idiot again. And uh, what a muppet. I can see that I really need to work extra hard to please our friends down under. Moving on with the reason we're here today, Honda's 2019 CB500X. Now before we get into any of the details, I want to mention this first. Even though official pricing has not been announced yet, this bike will probably drop into dealers for around 7,500 US dollars. Just remember that when we go through all of the specs. Get your motorbike news in a pleasant way. Hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next episode. First introduced in 2013, the CB500X brought crossover adventure style to Honda's fun-focused twin-cylinder light middleweight class. In 2016, it got its first round of upgrades, but the 2019 version is the one everyone is talking about. So let's take a look at that. The 471cc twin parallel liquid cooled power plant delivers almost 47 horsepower and 43 newton meters of torque that are available from low RPMs, exactly what you would need for a lively crossover adventure bike. Top speed is unchanged compared to the previous model at 185 kilometers per hour but acceleration has been improved. Lots of other improvements, some of them quite big, have been made to the engine which on paper will result in a quieter, smoother ride. New for the 2019 model, linked to a 6-speed gearbox, is a wet clutch. So the CBX5... C okay, can, can we just agree to call it the X, the Honda X from now? CB500X is a mouthful. So, linked to a 6-speed gearbox by a wet clutch, the X remains confident in its wide range of abilities. Front suspension is preload adjustable and features up to 150 millimeters of travel, while the back suspension has been changed from a double tube design to a single tube shock absorber as found on larger capacity sport bikes. Rear wheel travel is also at 150 millimeters and while this suspension format is not amazing compared to other adventure bikes, don't forget this is a small crossover that tries to offer the best of both worlds. Seat height is not adjustable at 830 millimeters, but the riding position has been adjusted to be more of an upright adventure position. Ground clearance is at an acceptable 180 millimeters, but one thing it does not come with out of the factory, and it's not even on the official accessories list, is a bash plate, which you will definitely need if you decide to have some fun off-road. The X sports a 19-inch wheel in the front, which is great for such a small bike, and a 17-inch one in the back. These are not spoked wheels, however, but cast aluminium multi-spoke design, so extra care is needed when going over rocky terrain. Brakes. You get a single 310mm disc in the front with a two-piston caliper and a 240mm disc in the back with a single piston caliper. Being a smallish and low-powered bike, these brakes should be more than enough. ABS is standard in some parts of the world, like the EU, but in the US it is optional. Why you would choose a bike without ABS is beyond me. Fuel capacity is at 17.3 liters and coupled together with this bike's amazing fuel economy, you should see a range of about 500 kilometers. Weight, 196 kilograms wet weight. And this wet weight number is with a full tank of gas. Exactly the under 200 kilograms two piston off-road machine all dual sport riders have been waiting for. Color options, the X will be available in three color options for the US and two for the rest of us peasants. Grand Prix Red, that's the US model only, Boring Black and the Boring White. Bells and whistles, quite a lot for such a small entry price. You get an LED headlamp and tail light paired together with LED turn signals, ABS in most parts of the world and a new LCD instrument cluster, which finally features a gear indicator. Honda has decided to make everything else optional. Their accessories catalog feature everything from a higher windscreen to heated grips, side cases and crash guards. Keeping the initial price low and allowing the rider to customize the bike as they see fit surely is going to win a lot of people over. So, in conclusion, 
Honda took it very seriously with this update to the CB500X. They took a, yeah, it can go off-road attitude and gave it more of a off-road, it's where it's at attitude. And for the price point that it enters the market with, it definitely should be a hit with beginner riders as well as seasoned riders that want an inexpensive, cheap to run bike that is perfect for a hefty commute and for fun on the dirt track. Bah, bah, bah. Let me know in the comments below what your take is on Honda's latest adventure crossover and what it compares to other bikes that maybe are on your radar. Well, that's the show everyone. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you've learned something new. Cheers and see you on the next one.